Okay, it's connecting. Awesome. And we are live. Okay, okay guys. Um, everybody's about to start coming in right now. But, you know, if you're just coming in, today I have with me Philip Burnett. He just signed his very first NISA contract. And in the video, guys, look at the video that I had posted about two weeks ago when I went to go watch the Maryland Bobcats. He was there and he was just briefing us how he was training with their second team. And now he's officially signed with the first team. And I'll, I'll leave it to you to introduce yourself. Yeah, man. No, I'm excited to be here. So, yeah, like you said, um, yeah, I was training with the reserve team. Uh, I was performing well. Um, I got an opportunity. And recently I signed with the first team. So, I mean, it happens like that. Um, you just got to believe in yourself and keep working. Yes, yes I love to hear that. So, so for, for everybody who's watching, watching I'm going to have a lot of people raging from 15 all the way to our age who are already, already chasing the journey. journey. Why? Why? Or like... Or like First of, First of all, why did you choose, choose this team? team? Was, it was it because it was close by, by or was there, was there any other reason? So, yeah, I mean, obviously it helps to be close by because um, my family's from here. But, you know, after I graduated in December, you know, I was I was traveling with teams everywhere, you know, Detroit, Kentucky. Um, but, yeah, ultimately um, it worked out best here. So I guess a little bit of luck and just also, you know, being close to my family. Um, Fortunately, I worked out with the Bobcats. Mm -hmm. So, so um, those, those who are still, still joining in, this, this is Philip Burnett, and we, we want to look at, a, you know, you know his, his journey since, since he was young and to now, now that he signed his very first professional contract. contract. He's, He's currently, currently playing in NISA. NISA. Um, um, for those who don't, don't know, this is third, third division, division in the United States soccer period. So, so Tell me, Tell me a little, little bit about, about your younger days, days. You, know, you know, when you, when you first, first started, started soccer, soccer, how was that? What made you interested in playing, playing the sport itself? Yeah, so I think I played baseball when I was like nine to maybe 11, but I didn't really enjoy it too. I mean, it's fun, but it wasn't for me. Um, I have a lot of energy and, you know, baseball is a lot of sitting and waiting for, for your one moment. Um, so then I started playing soccer when I was about 11 or 12 you know i played youth uh started with rec then i worked my way up into club and then in high school and got a little bit more serious um you know i think my team was becoming a pre-academy um we were really good won the national championship my junior year before my mm -hmm. senior year so got a little bit of attention from colleges um started getting recruited around that time and it all worked out i ended up getting um a decent um, offer from St. Francis University in Pennsylvania. Went there for two years, um, transferred to Liberty University, and then finished my career there. And, you know, after that, um, my goal was really just to see if I could play after, um, since I obviously love soccer. And, yeah, I got very fortunate that I'm here now. So, so how long, when, when, did, when you did you finish, finish school? school? Um, prior, prior to, to signing, signing your first professional, professional contract. contract. Yeah, so I only did the fall semester this um, previous school year. So I, I finished around December 15th, 18th, maybe. Um, then around that time, I started, you know, reaching out to my teammates uh, that are playing pro now, um, you know, former coaches, started working with an agent and, yeah, just really trying to look for opportunities anywhere. And mm -hmm. I went on a few trials in December, January, and then, you know, preseason starts in February. I had a few preseason invites. And, yeah, ultimate, ultimately led me to the Bobcats. And, um, you know, there was a lot of guys coming into preseason, so uh, they had a few of the new guys um, drop down to play as reserve players. And... Mm -hmm. You know, I just believed in myself. I uh, worked hard for maybe a month, a month and a half, and then 
uh, got the opportunity to train with the first team. Um, some things happened. Um, opportunities opened up, and then I think I was signed um, around March or April. Of 2023. Yes, of this year. Okay, okay so, there's so there's a lot, a lot of guys who, who you know, you, know, you, you, you mentioned, mentioned that you've been, you've been going, going to open trials, trials and certain, certain trials. trials. Uh, do, uh, do you think those, those trials prepared, prepared you with, with you, know, you know, how, how you were training with Maryland, Maryland Bobcats? Bobcats? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, you're always going to feel a little bit of butterflies or nerves, I guess, um, going into stuff like that. So the more the more practice runs you get at it, you know, you're bound to come out um, with something, you know, even if it's not um, a contract offer, maybe it's a preseason invite. And, you know, you build confidence once you get one of those, then you get another one of those, and then maybe a team offers you something, and you just build confidence off of the more of those that you go to, you know. So, so since, since you, know, you know, when, when did, did you figure, figure out that, that you were good, good right? Because right? you, you mentioned, mentioned that you started, started at a young age. age. But when, but when did, did you realize, realize oh, you, you know what? what? I'm actually, I'm actually good, good enough to play, play professional. professional. Um, honestly, I just always wanted to. Um, you know, when I was 13, 14, I wasn't even really starting for my club team, but... You know, I just enjoyed going out there every day. I mean, I like working hard, training on my own. So, um, you know, once you start playing well, um, that was probably around my junior year of high school. You know, I was starting for a really good club team that became an academy. And that's when I sort of believed in myself a little bit more. You know, I'm playing with these guys that are playing at these Power 5 schools. You know, I know I can play at that level. And a lot of those guys end up playing after, so probably around my junior year of high school, I'd say. Mm. And, and were your, were your family, family always supportive, supportive of you playing, playing soccer? Or, or were they were like, like African parents, parents when they're, they're like, like nah, nah, sports, sports is, not is not the move. move. You got to be, be a doctor or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my parents have been great. Um, I'm very fortunate. You know, I was able to go to a lot of those tournaments when I was younger. But yeah, no, my mom, um, you know, I have my MBA now. She sort of sometimes questions like, hey, like I could be making, you know, 80, 90,000 straight out of college just with a corporate job. Like, why am I doing this? But, you know, I mean, you got to do what you love. I mean, for me, this is, this is something I prefer to do, even if I'm not, you know, insanely rich right away. Um, doing something I love and still being able to support myself, I think, is my priority right now. Yeah. yeah. So, so what... what do you, do you credit, credit that, that helped, helped you achieve, achieve your first, first professional contract the most? Um, so I guess a lot of things, you know, factor into it. But for the Bobcats, our core values are, um, what is it, attitude, effort, and desire. So I think those really sum it up. You know, you have to have a positive attitude. You know, I got dropped down to the reserves and... You know, I was just every day I showed up to practice. Like, yeah, I'm going to dominate, prove everyone wrong, make it back up to the first team. Um, you know, you have to have that desire um, just to want to keep going. A lot of people might quit because they don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, effort, you know. You need to do stuff outside of training. It's not just when you show up maybe for two hours a day. You got to do stuff on your off days. You need to recover. You need to eat right and sleep right. So... All that adds up and you a little bit better. And, you know, if you're the best version of yourself, that's that's when you have the best chance of making it. Mm -hmm. I, I want you to agree. Did you, Did you have, have any setbacks, setbacks that, like, that, like held, held you back, back from moving forward? forward? From, from injuries, you know, you know lack, lack of income, income in certain times. times. Were, there Were there any setbacks, setbacks that, you, that you, you know, a lot, a lot of people don't, don't see, see that, that you experienced on your journey? journey. Yeah, no, I think everyone goes through a lot of setbacks. For me, right when I transferred to uh, Liberty, you know, I was I was a starter at St. Francis, very good team. We had nine, ten wins every year. And then I transferred. Uh, I just decided I, I felt like um, it was the right decision to make to go to Liberty. And my first game with Liberty, um, I tore my foot. Yeah, I tore yes. a few ligaments and tendons and displaced my sesamoid bones and my big toe and you know 
that was in the first game. I was I was scared. You know, I had a scholarship. Didn't know if I could still really go to school. Even, I mean, soccer was a stretch. My doctor told me I only had, like, a 5% chance of returning to even, like, running. So um, that was really hard for me. I was in uh, one of those scooters after I had surgery for uh, a long time. And then just... You know, I had to show up every day and do everything I could to get back on the field because it was really important to me. And, you know, I believed in myself, even though, I mean, I knew the odds weren't really in my favor. But I think just being able to mentally get through something like that really, you know, um, translates into other parts of your life. And even now, you know, I'm very grateful every day I get to train because uh, a few years ago, I I didn't even think I'd be in this position. Mm -hmm. So... So I know, I know, I know, I know a, lot a lot of people, people who are getting, getting on right, right now, now. Um, but, but Philip, he was, he was training with the second, second team, team, right? And, you know, you know when you're when playing with the second, second team, team, you're not, you're not on, on a contract, contract most of the time, time right? right? There's, There's players, players who are there who are, are even still in academies, academies that, get that get training sessions, sessions and, nobody and nobody actually knows they're, they're going to get signed. signed. And... I get, I get a lot, a lot of guys, guys messaging, messaging me, hey, hey how, how can, can I sign a contract here and there? And there? You, you took, took initiative to, to reach, reach out, out to Bobcats. Bobcats. Would you, would you th- do you do think, think players, players trying, trying to trend on, on second, second team, team, even if they're not getting paid, paid is, is a, a good, good way, way to start? start. Yeah, I mean, if, if you believe in yourself and you believe that you can play at that level, I mean, it definitely wouldn't hurt you know I mean every time I showed up to practice my goal is to make it very obvious that I should be on the first team so if you have that mentality um I think it's a great opportunity to be a reserve player what do you, what do you think, think you did different that separated, that separated you from all, all the other players, players that, that were, were on that second team? team so I mean I think one of the you know uh, my coach is Caroline Oh, I, oh, I think, think your, your mic is covered. covered. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, like I was saying, um, you know, just being consistent, showing up early, um, helping clean up, being engaged throughout the entire session, just things that you have control over. You know, sometimes you might have a bad day. It might Your touch might not be there, but um, just control what you can. And I yeah, think yeah. that's it's the biggest thing that you can show anyone. Mm. Yeah, because so you would say having a really good first touch um, or like making the least amount of mistakes compared to all your other counterparts. Yeah, I mean, that's not how I look at it. The the way I look at it is just I want to be the best one there. You know, if they're going to sign one person, I want that to be me. So every day I show up just making sure I'm the best one on the field. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. I switched the cameras back to you talking uh, on full screen when I was sneezing. So I know the viewers are like, "Why is he screaming?" <laughs> yeah, no, that wasn't me. But yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's actually amazing because all this time you were training, you know, you were just betting on yourself. The time you were there training with the team, you could be doing other things. Mm-hmm. Um, but you were sacrificing a quarter of your day to train with these group of guys for free with the belief that you're going to sign your contract and you signed it, which is actually really amazing. I don't know if a lot of people understand how amazing that is because there's a whole, I don't know, 40 other players that are still waiting for their chance right now. Yeah, no, I mean, there's a lot of guys, I mean, even being a, a reserve player, that's, that's a blessing in itself, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just getting the opportunity to play with the best of the best. You know. So now that you've signed your first professional contract, what is how is your vision looking like 10 years from now? Uh honestly, I can't even say it. <laughs> I'm I'm still just focusing on one day at a time, really. But mm-hmm. 10 years from now, you know, hopefully I've made an impact, you know. Stuff happens, like I said, uh, I had an injury. It, my career could have been over already, but, you know, I just want to be the best version of me, whatever that looks like. You know, I, I could be done with soccer. I could be coaching. I could just, whatever I do, um, 
just knowing that every everything I do, I, I try my best to work as hard as I can. So hopefully in 10 years, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll be happy and healthy and still making an impact on, on others. That's awesome. Cause I know, um, there's one of my favorite quotes from Denzel Washington. He's like, um, what was it? A dream without goals is just a dream or a plan. Once some, something like that. And I remember thinking like, okay, I want to sign a professional contract. And I always had these like little goals, right? So far, I've gotten all of them, right? Except the last one, signing a professional. Um, that's why I was asking you because I know now you're in a new realm, right? You did the hardest part, just breaking in. And um, I know some people, they just want to play professional at any level. And then there's some people who are like, you know what? I am signed, but... I want to play MLS. I want to go this way. And I know there's the humbleness in us, you know, like, let me not, you know, sign too crazy. Um, but I like that you still have a goal to be proceeding and climbing this ladder. Um, it's a hard journey, but like you said to yourself, those who believe in themselves make it the farthest, you know? So... Yeah. Um, any advice you'd give to younger guys who are trying to be in your same position, any distinct thing that you can give them that you wish you had this information maybe eight years ago, 10 years ago? Yeah, honestly, I don't think there's really, um, like any like secret formula, you know, you just gotta work hard every day. Um, mm -hmm. every aspect of your life, you know, choosing to, to eat salad instead of, you know, soda or whatever, um, just believe in yourself. Um, you know, a lot of people probably will think you're sort of crazy. Um, mm -hmm. but just keep believing. And then once you get to the, the point in your life where you are looking for a contract, you know, um, there's teams that you're probably good enough to play for, but you're just not the right fit. So just, just keep believing in yourself and just, uh, knowing it'll happen if you keep working hard. Did you notice any significant differences from your college team? to like this nisa team yeah i know there's there's definitely a big difference i mean i love college soccer it was a great time but once you know people some people uh you know really this is their life you know you're a pro mm -hmm. athlete um like your family might depend on it and so there's just a bit more intensity i think in practice you know in college you sort of like hey like the 29th to 30th guy on the team is not really there for anything serious. The guys here, pretty much everyone's fighting for a spot. You know, even if, if you're not um, in the 18, 20 man roster, you know, you're the next week in practice, you're, you're going all out, you know, because everyone has the same opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're doing well, you're going to play. If you're not, you're not, there's not enough, there's not as much bias. And uh, as there was in college, you know, sometimes, you might be friends with the coach or whatever he's going to play you or, you know, stuff like that. Um, that doesn't really happen anymore. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, a lot of people are going to watch this and they're going to have their questions. You've already, you know, been part of several matches, games against other teams. How was that for you? How was your first feeling, you know, getting, you know, on the pitch, knowing that you're officially part of the first team, how did that feel the first time coming back as a pro player? Yeah, no, it, it was it was insane. I mean, I got a chance to travel to Chattanooga. Um, I didn't play there, but just seeing the fans was like, it's crazy, it's a crazy experiment. And then uh, I actually, the next week, we came back and played home and I was in the 18, I started, uh, which is crazy. Congratulations, by the way. Thanks, man. Yeah, having my first uh, professional soccer match in my hometown, uh, I mean, can't even describe it. You know, I was, I was so excited. Um, we, we won the game. Um, you know, there's nothing more I could ask for. My family was there. My friends were watching. Um, yeah, it was insane. I mean, you know, you always know you could play at that level, but just mm -hmm. actually 
have um, have done have I don't even know how to say it, but uh, knowing that you've done it um, is a great feeling and it's something I hope to build off of. You know, I'm hoping to make the lineup uh, this next game and then the game after that. You know, and just keep pushing um, to be in the roster. Um, but yeah, no, it was a great experience to have my first my first game uh, about a week ago. Yeah. Awesome. And um, this live stream was because Philip just signed his very first professional contract with um, a NISA team here in Maryland, the Bobcats. And I wanted to bring him on just to give him uh, you guys as an insight on how he managed to sign his first professional contract. Uh, he went through the route. He went to college, came out, contesting team, going to trial, finally got the chance to be training with this second team at uh, Maryland Bobcats. Although a lot of people may see a second team as not a way to go, but he stayed there. How long were you there until you signed your first contract again? Um, I think I started in March and I got signed late April, I believe. So less than a month, you would say. I think it was more than a month. Uh, it was less probably a month and a half, two months maybe. Yeah. Beautiful. So he came there and it wasn't just him. It was a group, a whole team. And he was outperforming and signed his contract. Now, I hope that show proves as motivation to everybody else that's on that team, knowing that hey, it's possible. And I wanted to share that with you guys. We want to give a big thank you to Philip to coming on today. Uh, we're definitely gonna bring him back, right? So, um, if you guys have any questions for the next live stream, I'm gonna upload a picture so you guys can ask all the questions for Philip and we'll be make sure to answer all of them. All right. Thank you, Philip, once again. And uh, is there anything you want to say before we end it? No, um, obviously I appreciate you. Um, and yeah, no, your time's coming too, man. I can feel it. Um, but you now to anyone watching, you know, just keep believing in yourself, keep working hard and, you know, trust God, uh, it'll all work out. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. And we'll see you guys in the next video.